Hello, Perceptionists. Welcome to Perceptionist Anonymous. I'm Emily. I'm Christy Ann. And I'm Krista Lynn. Welcome. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> and that means Mooney so time. What's up? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Do you know how nice it is to be in 2021 and be able to talk to you guys about a, the, the astrology? It's not like gloom and doom. <laughs> as uh-huh. often. It's so nice. There's still stuff going on this year and I am going to mention it in uh, not this episode, but the one around Pisces season. There's stuff happening, but it's not every day and all the time. And that's so refreshing because for a while there, it's like astrologer or omen of darkness. <laughs> I couldn't figure out which one I was. Now I get Always to be, both. you know, that well-rounded thing. You're so, so sweet nice. though, because every time there was something to me, you'd be like, it sounds bad, but <laughs> this! And it's like, you're so good at that, as opposed oh, to just yeah. be like, yeah, no, guys, this is gonna suck. Sounds yeah. like a trauma well, I- response to me. <laughs> <laughs> literally just did an interview where someone was like so is 2021 gonna be better than 2020 and I was like yes but this but it means this like you just have to understand the the best analogy is 2020 made us ask the questions 2021 is having us find the answers then in 2022 we have the answers we move forward you know it's mm-hmm. that kind of thing so this is what it's like to be the hero in the story not to be the hero telling the story after it's happened Cool. kind of situation yeah. but it does mean that you are the hero so that's always nice yeah i love that that's great i look forward to 2022 it feels Spell soft <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that oh. cool took a yeah. squeaky so toy we... off of my dog threw it and then realized that's the worst thing you do for a corgi because she's only going to go get it and bring it back so i apologize <laughs> for any squeaks and jingles you hear <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today ladies cool. Uh, we are talking about such an incredible new moon. I cool. can't even believe, like, I remember talking about the winter solstice where it was like, this is happening. And ironically, at the same time, so is this, 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 and this, like this massive alignment of all these coincidental uh, things. This is another situation that's kind of like that, but it's so nice and refreshing. And and usually on a new moon, we talk about what should you be manifesting? And that's nice. But it's, it's never quite like this one. Okay. This truly is about manifesting. It's in yeah. Aquarius. It's on the 11th. You know, it's, it's got a lot going for it as far as manifesting goes. Aquarius actually rules the 11th house in the Zodiac of Wishes manifesting friendship believe it or not, because your friends show you what you're manifesting. The society you surround yourself with is kind of when they say the average of the six people you spend the most of your time around shows kind of what you are. That's the results of manifesting. Isn't that interesting? So um, it's it's a, uh, yeah, it's a um, really good practical way to see evidence of your manifesting. I like using that. But this New moon in Aquarius, a new moon about manifesting in Aquarius, about manifesting on the 11th. It's so great. And then on top of all of that, pretty much all of the planets are in Aquarius. They wanted to come to this party. Welcome to Saturn return land. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. For people who are having Saturn returns in Aquarius, I know that feel, but I am not not excited to go back to it. No, it's actually a really good thing because this is a very positive new moon extremely positive not only because both luminaries the sun and the moon are conjunct as they do on a new moon but both benefits if you're born born during the day the most positive planet in your chart is actually going to be jupiter if you're born at night the most positive planet is actually traditionally venus well both of these planets are also conjunct on this day so we have the benefits right next to each other i just did a a video emily for tiktok of like the planets sort of palling around on the new moon. So that'll be released soon. But basically you have Jupiter and, and Venus hanging out next to each other. The moon and the sun hanging out next to each other and joining the party are also Mercury retrograde, but still there. And Saturn. Shows up drunk already. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. That's the feeling we've been getting in this, this Mercury guys, retrograde for sure. You guys didn't oh, invite me, but I'm here. That's way more than pre-game. That was great. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. So we have a lot going on. There's a lot of conjunction. In fact, we, we haven't seen an assembly like this in Aquarius since the 60s. Oh. Any Garth Brooks fans out there, he was born around that time the last time we saw them it's the, the name that's been coming up the most when people talk about the last time we've seen oh this God. which it's is so funny yeah so 
So we have this stellium. And really, when you want to interpret this, this stellium, it's a restructuring of our appreciation for ourselves and how we fit into the collective. So that's kind of like, this is such an interesting image. It's like the beginning of Lion King, where they're holding Simba out for everybody to see him. This is us saying, here's the air period, this air era, the cycle that we've come into. And we're just showing it off to all the planets. And they all came for like the baptism of the air cycle. Wow. That's what this really feels like. And it's even, right? That's it's great. even nice because we have a, a very nice sextile between Chiron, emotional wounds, and Saturn. Saturn is saying like, let's support healing the things that may be rooted in anger by taking a higher perspective. So, you know, a lot of people are feeling frustrated right now, and rightfully so. You have a right to feel frustrated, but it's also a good thing to sometimes look at the frustration as, I'm sure you guys can agree, as a symptom mm -hmm. of something else, and then address that something else. And on this day, we have the opportunity, if we try, to be able to see that higher perspective, especially with all this energy in Aquarius. Aquarius is like a very high perspective. It's an air sign. So... It's very in line with this new energy that's coming in. We are the people who are building a, a new paradigm that's actually going to last for 200 years. So this is the start of a 200-year cycle. The actions we are all taking will have an impact on people for the next 200 years. And that is so beautiful to be a part of. So for this new moon, I will be doing a video on TikTok and on Instagram about what each rising sign can expect or maybe might be feeling during this new moon but in general it's very important to get clear on what you're manifesting and by that my recommendation is that you really become conscious of your thoughts and your feelings decide mm -hmm. how it is that you want to feel assign a thought or a sentence to that that really gives you that feeling and puts a name to it and then surround yourself with the things or the activities that replicate that feeling to you to help you call it in because you're creating a space for it and then you're doing the things that someone that feels that way does that is manifesting that's the living like you already have it part so this is a very big deal this new moon to just say like how do i want to be feeling what does that sound like like, what, what's my thought when I have this feeling of I feel good because, or I feel happy because, and mm -hmm. then how can I start having that feeling right now? And that energy is going to really call in all the stuff that's going to set you up for that success. Awesome. I, I feel it, yeah. dude. Yeah. And uh, the affirmation that I assigned for this one, because we do have Chiron involved, this big stellium, it's a new moon, it's a new paradigm. I'm going to be using paradigm way too much this year, I can tell already. It's going to be like my word of the year. It's but good. my my affirmation for this year is, I love and forgive myself so I can love and forgive the world and move forward in grace. Cool. Yeah, right it's a bit of a longer one this time, but it's just so like one step at a time kind of thing. Yeah. I think it really walks you from the beginning to the end of the sentence and the feelings that go in between. It's a very high vibe story, wouldn't you say, Emily? <laughs> mm, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that even though you're talking about how much manifestation power it is, it's both manifesting love and forgiveness of yourself in the world. Like how mm -hmm. the twofold aspect kind of comes into that, I think is really yeah. powerful. As within, um, so without. Yeah. Really, yeah. really neat. I think the forgiveness thing, I mean, it feels like that is so much, at least for my personal experience and the people that I've been around, like the idea of understanding that things have happened in the past and things, understanding that things are going to happen in the future, but that we are allowed, we're allowed to just let them happen. We don't have to like continuously yeah. reprimand ourselves. We don't have to continuously say that, you know, remind ourselves we did something wrong, remind ourselves we could have done something better, like to be able to like let our shoulders down, release our jaw and just uh, sit up straight and move forward regardless. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. It's so neat to be able to say like, I am everything that led me to this moment, but I don't have to continue being that if I don't want to. Like mm -hmm. you are not committed to any of the things that like someone put it this way on Instagram. I wish I could remember exactly who it was, but she said, if you always have bad birthdays, that can stop now. If you always have a hard time on Mondays or you're, you're not a morning person, mm -hmm. whatever you've decided for yourself, you can change that in a second. You can decide tomorrow I'm going to be a morning person 
And then you'll set yourself up for success in that in whatever ways you can, like laying out your workout clothes or whatever it is that you do. Yeah. That's manifesting. It's the same as making a sandwich. You decide what you want to feel like. You decide what sandwich is going to make you feel that way. And then you put it together and suddenly, ta-da, you've manifested a sandwich. So Delicious. think about that. <laughs> it is, right? Think about what you want to be putting into your life that way. Okay. And don't base it off of everything you expected or held yourself to in the past. It mm -hmm. can be completely new. I appreciate the tangible nature that you just gave that like manifesting is just making the sandwich like so yeah. often people are like how do i manifest and it feels so abstract mm -hmm. and so almost like the act of manifesting itself you have to manifest you know like and that yeah. makes it even more of like a failure system that you just are constantly kind of stuck on and rotating through and like it really jams people up sometimes so i love the fact that you made it that tangible because it's true that's basically how it works like accept <laughs> this is what you want to feel like decide how you want to make it happen and then call it in yeah. Muscle memory, man. You will yeah. retrain our brain to be able to easily access this after time, after time, after time. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's my uh, Taurus using food to, <laughs> to bring in the more tangible side of manifest. Is that what your shirt says? It says, sorry for what I said when, when I was, hu is it when, when Mercury I was Mercury was in retrograde. Uh, Mercury was in retrograde. Yes. That's sorry cute. for what I said when nice. Mercury was in retrograde. My sister-in-law made this for me. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's cute. Yeah, I get to wear it three times a year because that's how often Mercury goes in retrograde. And boy, do I. I like over wear this when Mercury's in retrograde. So You're like, yeah, the sweater. <laughs> yeah. The sweater comes out now. <laughs> it's super part. comfy, too. I love it. I like the lavender of it. The lilac. Yeah. Mm, that's awesome. <laughs> it's a good color. It's cozy. Yeah, cool. Very feminine. So cold. Is no, it? So I guess the best thing for people to do during this new mood then is just to line out what exactly they want to manifest manifest is mm -hmm. there a specific timeline that we're manifesting this for because i know during the grand conjunction it was like what you want to manifest the next like three years or whatever it was is yeah. this mm -hmm. like is there something in that space or is this just like no just how you're doing for the rest of the year or till the next new moon or whatever it is so there there are cycles everything in life goes in cycles mm -hmm. this new moon where it is is sort of setting up for I would, I would say a good long while, at least the next three years, because it is still playing off of this energy from the, uh, from the conjunction. But for new moon stuff, you're going to start noticing the, the effects of it over the next, uh, like, I don't know when the next, I should have looked that up, but the next new moon in Aquarius will sort of bring it up again. And so that's going to be a couple months. I think it's typically like three months. That's a wild guess, but I'm pretty sure that's what I've heard before. But you'll start seeing effects of it in as soon as two weeks, because as the moon goes through the cycle, things as we move towards the uh, full moon will start releasing. Mm -hmm. And so you're building up to the full moon, you release to the next one, and you go through these periods, and the moon is in Aquarius around once a month. So we kind of feel it, it's just not conjunct the sun at that exact time. It's not a new moon every time it's in Aquarius. So you'll feel those ebb and flows. The moon is so amazing that it moves every day. So it's so close to us and we're so close to it. It's the most accessible planetary energy that we have. And I just love that. So yeah, I hope that was a, a clear enough answer. Speaking of tangible. <laughs> No, I think that was great. Like, yeah. uh, I think that was really awesome. So, okay, thanks. Just to give you always make it tangible. Like, yeah, yeah but also, you know, to give people some guidelines of like, hey, what should you be looking out for? Like, how far in advance? Mm -hmm. And of course, that's you can idea. always manifest for as much future as you want to, but just like something that would be good. So, I think that's awesome. Yeah, actually, awesome. now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably like a six month cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Perfect. So, I mean, every day is uh, another grain of sand. So you're, you're making a difference with everything you do all the time. This is a part of the completion of another cycle that came before it, but it's the beginning of a new cycle. Now it's the, mini, the middle of another cycle. So it's important not to get like super caught up on where you are in the cycle, but I do love the acknowledgement that this as a new moon, especially it's the beginning of this crazy, amazing energy. The fact that this new moon so close to that conjunction is in Aquarius. I mean, it's Aquarius season, so it's supposed to happen that way, but it's really amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Aquarius. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just logic myself. It's probably going to be like a year, right? So, yeah, full okay. moon will cool. be in six months, the full moon in Aquarius. New moon cool. will be a year from now. 
He's because right. science. <laughs> <laughs> because science. <laughs> Until next yeah. year. Awesome. I don't know what it yeah. is. I think it's going to be great. It seems very right. soft energetically. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Thank well, you so much, Crystal Yeah. Thank you so thank much you for, guys. for giving us all of that amazing astrological wisdom. Listeners or watchers, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, be sure that you head over to Crystal Instagram at The Real Crystal We'll have that linked in our show notes or below the video or whatever. Um, and uh, we'll head over there to get her astrological wisdom. She does daily forecasts. She's also on TikTok, same handle, same sort of awesome stuff. You can also book a reading with her through that too. And they're super incredible. If you've never gotten an astrological reading, I highly recommend you do it. It just gives you permission to be yourself and it's pretty fantastic. So um, highly recommend you do that. So go check her out there. You can also follow us on Instagram at Perception Synonymous. You can like us on Facebook. Perception is Anonymous. Um, again, YouTube or Perception is Anonymous as well. Um, and you can email us, perceptionistanonymous at gmail.com. And if you have any questions about this new moon or you just want to share what you're manifesting, shoot us an email. Let us know what you're manifesting and we can all Thank manifest it together. So absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate you all. And as always, remember. Mm -mm.